everybody, welcome back to A Late Show. She is a Grammy and Emmy award-winning hip-hop icon and actress. Her new drama series, The Equalizer, premiered last night on CBS. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Queen Latifah. Oh, and she's still getting zhuzhed up. You look Thank beautiful. You. you look fantastic. You're glowing. Thank you. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you. But I also well, love your background. I love that background. Oh. I love that painting behind you. It gives you like a nimbus behind your head. That's beautiful. That's I love beautiful that. Painting. You know, it's just like it's a little you glow. Know, that, that glow. That's, that's my soul sister back there supporting me. You know? Well, and the little flowers. I got some books here. You're all set up. It's as if you've gotten, yeah, don't get too used to COVID because we, we're we going to come out of it someday. I just know it. How, how have you been passing the time? How have you been handling it? I have been, uh, I've, like everybody else, you know, okay. ups and downs, ups and downs. But, I, I mean, I've, I've found the uh, the pain in it, <laughs> having to turn into a, 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 the chef, the the handyman. The, you got to fix everything. You got to figure everything out. Um, I, the, I cook everything, clean everything. You know, you just have to turn into every woman or every man or you know, your roles have changed. Whatever you do in the house, you know, you had to like take over and just do everything. And, um, but at the same time, it was like, what a, it was one of the most beautiful springs I've ever seen in my life. You're crazy. Um, I was in LA, the, the sky was clear, the flowers bloomed. There were hundreds of butterflies around my house flying in from Mexico, <laughs> you know, it was, mm -hmm. It was a very bizarre time, you know, and it was beautiful at the same time. And the coyotes were coming out early, like, wait, we good? Like, you know, I'm like, no, nah, you're not good. And don't think I won't spray you with this coyote spray, you know? <laughs> but they still, they just, it was like so natural. There were no people, there were no cars, there were no planes and, and noise. And it was just, it was just very, uh, strange you know it mm -hmm. was just so much loss going on at the same time as this weird nature's beauty going going on you know so um but it was you know it is what it is we we, we just got to stay strong and well, keep our heads up well we're tiptoeing back toward um certain aspects of normality right now like i don't know I don't, last night you know obviously there was the you know last night the the epic tv event a lot of drama, millions of people tuned in, and that's that's just the Equalizer, your new show on CBS, <laughs> 8 p.m. on Sunday nights. But before that, before the, the the world premiere of that, which we'll get to in just a moment, there was uh, there was the Super Bowl. Um, you have this experience I've never had. You performed at three Super Bowls, including in one of the halftime shows back in '98. What's yeah. that room like? What does it feel like? Obviously, the weekend had a weird room to play, but what's that feel like to be there at the Super Bowl? Honestly, it is like no other feeling in the world. I mean, I think most hip hop artists would liken it to playing Madison Square Garden, mm -hmm. you know, but other than that, there's nothing that can compare to it. There is just this energy that is palpable. They're usually thousands and thousands of people everywhere you know the team you can feel you can see the team out there and they look nervous they look excited they look like they want to like go to the bathroom one more time before the game starts and they can't you know what i mean and some of them look like they can't wait they're just like itching they can't stand still you know and then well, what about you oh, right before you start to perform what is that feel what is that feeling like Little pressure. Um, I can't stand still. I feel like I want to go to the bathroom one more time. Um, you know, <laughs> you're feeling, you know, it, it feels like you feel this almost this this sort of reverence in a way because you not only want to rock this song or whatever performance you're going to do, but you feel like an American and you feel like you're doing it in front of the world. And so you just want to do the best you can do. And you know that these two teams have competed and, and, and gone through so much to get to this point. This is a championship game, a world championship game, and you are playing on a world championship stage. So it's like millions and millions of people are staring at you. So you got to kind of like 
you got to get in the game yourself. You got to step up and show up. And and I got to tell you, the performances were unbelievable. I was so blown away and I was so excited. My favorite part is always the flyover, though. Sure. You know, when, when you sing your song and then everyone's standing there and all of a sudden these planes just fly over and you can feel the rattle. You know what I mean? You you never you always see this stuff on TV. You never usually get to see that planes we're actually paying for. You know what I mean? <laughs> like so to see them fly over you so close, you know, and depending on the year, maybe the Blue Angels, it made it was like three different kinds of planes, you know, at this Super Bowl. So it was just it was really interesting. It was really, really, you know, just so much fun. But as interesting as it was, obviously it was just the opening act for the equalizer last night. Mm-hmm. At, at I think it came on at about 10.30 last night. Now, this this is uh, it's the new CBS series. Your friend Denzel Washington most recently played this part in the movies. Has he, right. given, you, has he given you any advice on, on how to play the equalizer, or is he prepared to be the second best equalizer now? Have you guys had any discussion about it? <laughs> I don't think Denzel is prepared to be the second best anything ever at any time, mm-hmm. anywhere. And if he does, I would be highly disappointed. So, um, <laughs> well, they should. I, he shouldn't have made his son such a good actor because his son's a really good actor. He better watch his back. Is going, but you know, you, yeah, it, that's how it's supposed to be. Okay. You know, you're supposed to make the little one is supposed to knock you off that throne. You know, and uh, yeah, he's clipping at those heels, but he he still got a little ways to go. Mm-hmm. You know, Denzel is 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 by far one of the best actors ever on the planet, and um, you know, I just. This is a different equalizer. I mean, what he gets to do in the movies um, is way different than what I get to do on network television every week. He definitely set the bar for me. So thanks a lot, bro. You know, I really appreciate that. Um, for the people but, who don't know, you're uh, you're ex CIA, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, a former CIA uh, operative who decides that they no longer they've been burned and their team has been. Um, uh, killed and they no longer want to work for the CIA. They don't want to do things for powerful people with money uh, who treat, you know, who who she feels now treats regular people like pawns and, you know, that their lives don't matter. And she's tired of using her skills to uh, service these missions that some somebody, you know, just writes away someone's life with the stroke of a pen. And and so she decides that she's going to use her expertise to to help the every man, you know, everyday person. Do you know what's um, going on in this clip we have here? Yes. I think in this clip, now there is a friend of hers played by Chris Noth who is still kind of in, kind of out. Who, uh, they're good friends and I think she kind of explains to him where she's, uh, where she's coming from and, and what, what, why she can't sleep at night. Jim? Well, what are you going to do now? Get a job at Starbucks. Get the free coffee. Join the PTA. Because well, you're such a people person, right? Or you could come work for me. Babysitting billionaires. An oil company. Private security is just like working for the CIA, except it pays a lot better. Oh, hell, it's all the same chessboard. You know that. I See, that's the problem right there. Everybody's playing chess. Nobody's thinking about the living, breathing pieces that we sacrifice along the way. You know, it's funny, when I can't sleep at night, it's not the things I've done that keep me up. It's the people I couldn't save. The people. (laughs) Well, Queen Queen Latifah, thanks so much for being here. Good to see you again. Listen. Keep doing what you do because I love the way you talk about politics, the way you make us laugh. You got you still give us the music and 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 you're good people. So well, keep you're, standing up and I'll tune into Equalizer. You're very kind, very kind, and we'll be tuning into you exactly Sundays at 8 p.m. here on the CBS Television Network. It's Queen Latifah, everybody. We'll be right back with the star of the Golden Globe-nominated movie Minari, Stephen Yun.